Genie Plus changed again. And by that, I mean it's more expensive and it can sell out now. Let's see if it's still worth it. Hello, ma'am fam. I'm at the Magic Kingdom, which is incredibly crowded because we're in the middle of spring break. Plus, Genie Plus, which previously topped out at $29, has been $35 per person all week. So I asked the ma'am fam on our Instagram, how many attractions would you have to ride with Genie Plus to make it worth a $35 per person per day? You said at least nine. So today I'm at Magic Kingdom during spring break to see if I can do at least nine attractions with Genie Plus. Now those nine attractions have to only be Genie Plus attractions, no standby lines, no fancy rides, no virtual queues, and I promise I'm gonna do good ones. I'm not just gonna go do like Magic Carpets of Aladdin and count it. But as a bonus, I'm also gonna talk about Tron Light Cycle Run, Disney's newest attraction, which is not part of Genie Plus, but it does have a virtual queue and a fancy ride. No standby though. I'll show you how to ride that. Things are getting confusing, but I am here to help. Hello, Magic Kingdom. Let's do a little Genie 101 as we head towards our first attraction and do a little refresher course on the system as a whole. Disney Genie is part of the My Disney Experience app and the system that rolled out to replace FastPass Plus. There are three different kinds of Genie. There's Disney Genie, which is simply integrated into your My Disney Experience app. This is free. It is the tip board, it is the dining tip board, it's the predicted wait times. You then have Genie Plus, which is a per person, per day cost that allows you to skip the line at over 40 different attractions across the four different theme parks. When the system first rolled out, it was $15 per person per day, and Disney said the system itself could not sell out. Certain attractions could run out of return times for the entire day, but as far as the actual purchase of Genie goes, you would have been able to do that all day long. However, they are now using flex pricing, meaning the busier it is, the more expensive Genie Plus is. We've seen it still as low as $15, and as of this week, the highest price point yet, $35 per person per day. Additionally, the entire system itself had been selling out between 10 and 11 a.m., which means if you hadn't purchased it in the morning, you weren't gonna be able to use it that day at all. Genie Plus allows you to book the participating tractions on a next available basis, and it allows you to skip the line at each of the attractions one time. You can park hop using the system. I'll get more into booking things in a moment. And last but not least, you've got individual lightning lanes, which I call fancy rides. Fancy rides are certain attractions at each park that are so fancy and so special and so in demand that they're not included in Genie Plus, but if you'd like to skip the line, you can pay an additional cost per person for just that one attraction. The last word you need to know is lightning lane. Lightning Lane is just the physical place at the attractions. Both Fancy Rides and Genie Plus attractions have Lightning Lanes. And by purchasing either Genie Plus or Fancy Ride, you are going through the Lightning Lane as opposed to the standby line. You do not need to purchase Genie Plus in order to purchase Fancy Rides and vice versa. Genie Plus attractions can be booked by anyone starting at 7 a.m. There are some attractions that sell out very quickly for the entire day, such as Slinky Dog Dash, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, so you're gonna wanna book those first thing right at 7 a.m. Then you can book your next Genie Plus attraction after either A, you've used the first one, B, it expires because you didn't use it for some reason, or C, after it's been 120 minutes since you booked it. Put a pin in that. We're gonna talk about the 120 minute rule in a little bit. After you've booked your second one, same rules apply to book your third and so on and so forth. You can book as many as you want throughout the day as long as there's availability. Fancy rides, on the other hand, are available to be booked at 7 a.m. by Disney World Resort guests only, and at the time that park opens for non-resort guests. Which means if you are a non-Disney World Resort guest, there's a strong chance that attractions like Tron and Rise of the Resistance will be sold out before you're able to buy one, which means you are then having to use the virtual queue or standby depending on the attraction. The fancy rides across the parks here at Magic Kingdom, Seven Doors Mine Train at time of filming is still one. Maybe they'll drop it down to Genie Plus, but as of now, it's still a fancy ride. Tron Light Cycle Run over at Epcot, it's Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. At Disney's Hollywood Studios, it's Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. And at Disney's Animal Kingdom, it's Avatar Flight of Passage. So first things first, let's rewind it back to earlier this morning. A little after midnight, I purchased Genie Plus. Genie Plus is available to purchase day of starting at midnight that night. So if you're a night owl like me, you can purchase it before you go to bed. If you're not a night person, make sure you get up well before 7 a.m. to make sure you can buy it for everyone in your party and check that everyone's all linked up. Then at 7 a.m., first things first, I booked my Tron Light Cycle Run virtual queue. Put a pin in that, we'll talk more about Tron in a moment. And then I booked my first Genie Plus attraction, which was Jungle Cruise. The 120 minute rule did come into play immediately when I booked Jungle Cruise, but put a pin in that. 
We'll get back to Genie Plus in a second. Let's talk about your order of operations first things in the morning. Number one, virtual queue. If you are trying to ride Tron Light Cycle Run or Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind with a virtual queue, you need to book that first at 7 a.m. Number two, your Genie Plus attraction. And number three, if you're a resort guest, your fancy ride. Again, virtual queue, Genie Plus, fancy ride. You're going for the most people that can access it to the fewest people that can access it. If you have multiple people that have my Disney Experience accounts and are all linked up, you can be doing it at the same time at 7 a.m. There have been times where Alan on his phone logged into his account and linked to me, and me on my phone linked to Alan and logged into my account have both been able to purchase things. So I was able to book our Genie Plus attraction while Alan joined the virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. So that is the best way to do it if you've got multiple people that can be working together to get everything that you need right at 7 a.m. Phew. Okay, that's a lot of information. There is more to come, but instead of doing it all right now, let's go ride an attraction. I'll be sprinkling in more tips, tricks, how to best use the system, the different features of the system throughout the video today. But we have at least 10 rides to do, so let's go jump on the first one. And by riding our first attraction, I obviously mean getting a shake in Jamaica. Now we go. Ironically, the first attraction we're doing today isn't on Genie Plus, but it is the newest ride in the Magic Kingdom. It's time to go on Tron Light Cycle Run. Tron Light Cycle Run officially opened this week. It is a thrill ride roller coaster themed to the Tron films. The beloved Tron films that everyone has seen and definitely demanded an attraction based on. Tron Light Cycle Run has a 48 inch height requirement and currently the only way you can access this attraction is by joining the virtual queue or by booking a fancy ride. There is no standby line for this attraction. Now booking the virtual queue, it has the same rules as Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind over at Epcot. The virtual queue is available to join at both 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. At 7 a.m., you must have a Magic Kingdom park reservation for anyone trying to join the queue. And at 1 p.m., you must be inside the park. The virtual queue fills up within seconds, so your best shot of getting a spot. First of all, you can confirm your party an hour before the two different virtual queue spots open. So I would recommend logging in 15 minutes or so prior to the virtual queue drop, making sure that everybody that wants to ride the attraction is selected and confirmed. Then have someone else with a world clock open their phone and look at that. And at 6.59.59, click refresh on the Tron screen, click join immediately, and hopefully you will get a virtual queue spot. If you are lucky enough to get a virtual queue spot, it will let you know your boarding group number. Then throughout the day, they will go higher and higher into the boarding groups. Then when it is your turn to ride, you will be sent a push notification through the app and you will be given one hour to return and check into the virtual queue. The virtual queue does not guarantee immediate access, it just guarantees you access to the ride. I have heard, especially during spring break, it's taken people quite a long time to get through the virtual queue. So we have joined the line and we're gonna see just how long that is today. If you want the immediate faster access, you are gonna need to book a fancy ride, but again, it opens at 7 a.m. for resort guests, at time of park open for non-resort guests, and it is typically being sold out within seconds of that 7 a.m., so odds are non-resort guests, at least right now, will not be able to book fancy rides. Again, Tron has a 48, 48 inch height requirement. It reaches speeds of almost 60 miles an hour, but the most controversial thing about Tron so far has been the seat. It's a very unique ride vehicle. The best way I can describe it is if Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure TM and Flight of Passage had a baby. You have to get into the seat, lean forward, pull the handlebars down, and that will lock you into the seat. I do recommend trying the test seat out here because it is so unusual and to kind of get a feel for how you're going to be loading on the test seat. This ride vehicle is so unique that honestly, don't trust anything you've read online. Don't trust anyone else's review of if they could or could not make the seat work for them. It is very unusual. Usual. There's no one size fits all. It's all about how your proportions are. So I recommend everybody try the test seat. If the test seat does not work for you, if it's not going to be comfortable or it's not going to accommodate you, there are certain trains that have a more traditional roller coaster seat in the back rows. So just talk to the cast members and they'll make sure you get in the right vehicle. The thing about Tron is I've never actually seen it. I've heard it's good. Uh, I've just never seen either version. I don't know how many people have. I don't know if this is a big fan following movie, but the ride's fun. So there's that. Have you seen Tron? Which version? Let me know in the comments. 
It took about 15 minutes for me to get inside the building. Attention users. TBD you how long it'll continue to take. Into the world of I'm about to be digitized. In this world, Sounds all unsafe. Users, should... users, prepare to be digitized into the world of drama. <laughs> That's for sure the coolest part of this queue. I confirmed to the cast member that you do get to see that if you go through the lightning lane, but the rest you don't get to see, or it's a lot shorter, but honestly, that's the coolest part. So lightning lane doesn't cut anything too important off. I was lucky enough to come to a preview of Tron with a couple dear friends invited me. I didn't film anything though, because I felt weird about filming at a cast member preview and it wasn't ready to be open to the public. And also the second time I wrote it, they asked me to put my phone away. So I don't think they want you filming on this attraction. You do have to put stuff in lockers, similar to Velocicoaster before you get to the attraction, but they also have a little like compartment in the vehicle itself. So I'm gonna put my filming stuff up uh, in the locker and then I'll bring my phone to get more B-roll, but I may not be able to film on the ride itself and we will all enjoy the Disney professionally recorded footage of the ride. The AI lady just said that in the light cycle run, there are winners and there are losers. Who are you? But I'm gonna remind you that when you're driving a light cycle, it drags a colorful trail behind you like this, but it's actually a solid wall and you're trying to cut off your opponent because if they run into it, they die. So think about that while you're riding this attraction. It took about 30 minutes to get to the lockers. Just gonna pick one at random. Try to remember the number. Going further down so it's less crowded. All right, this will work. All right, so you just tap whatever you have linked to Disney stuff. So a phone, a ticket, magic band should work. Come on, little guy. Come on. So because of my pop socket, the reader didn't actually work. So the cast member was kind of gave me a little card and said this would work. Open. All right, 408, that's my locker. Just like when you ride rides at Universal, to make sure to take whatever opened your locker with you, whether it be a magic band, a phone, a card, whatever it is, bring it with you. And again, mine didn't work because my pop socket, but they had a ready solution. Okay, bye. I did it. My team won. We murdered people. And then at the end, when you drive through, you go through some like orange bits. Some orange pixels. That's the guy you murdered. Hot take on this ride, huh? Okay, here are some things about Tron. Number one, it took me about 45 minutes to get from entering the virtual queue onto the ride vehicle. Number two, make sure you remember your locker number because just like Velocicoaster, you're gonna actually exit and be on the other side of the locker, so it's gonna be mirrored to where it was before, so remembering your number is key. Number three, if you'd like to wait for the front row, which I do recommend, it's absolutely the best seat on the attraction, you can do so, just let the cast members know. It could take a few extra minutes, obviously, but having ridden it now three times, in the middle, in the front, and in the back, I can tell you the front is absolutely the best spot, um, so I would wait for it for the first time I rode it, at least. Number four, it's a very fun attraction, but it is a very short attraction. I just asked the cast member, it's one minute and 15 seconds. That is my biggest gripe with this attraction. I don't even care that I don't know the IP. I don't even care that the seat is weird and confusing to get into and you gotta like lean down and it's all strange. For me personally, my biggest issue with this attraction is how short it is, especially considering how long it takes through the virtual queue because of how long the loading practice is, especially coming off the heels of Guardians, which is a very long coaster. A minute and 15 seconds just doesn't feel like enough. It's like right as you feel like you're getting going, it's over. But that said, it's beautiful. The takeoff is really fun. The outside part in the outside grid area is really cool. So highly recommend you ride it, but just know that you are gonna have to deal with the virtual queue or the fancy ride, and that it is a shorter coaster. But I think it's fun, and I think Magic Kingdom desperately needed another thrill ride. Headed towards Adventureland, because the first Genie Plus attraction I have booked is the Jungle Cruise. 
Now, while Magic Kingdom doesn't have an attraction like Slinky Dog Dash or Revy's Ride to Adventure that tend to go very quickly as of 7 a.m., there are certainly attractions that are more popular than others that will run out of Lightning Lane spots faster. Good choices at 7 a.m. in the Magic Kingdom for your first GD Plus, Jungle Cruise, Peter Pan's Flight, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Those are all really popular and will run out for the whole day. Your kind of next tier attractions would be things like Space Mountain, Haunted Mansion, Character Meet and Greets, Enchanted Tales with Belle. Then you've got things like Pirates of the Caribbean, It's a Small World, some of the smaller Fantasyland attractions like Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Those are kind of your tier three as far as what books up. And then your tier four would be things like Dumbo, The Barnstormer, Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. We're gonna add one more difficulty to booking Genie Plus. From 7 a.m. till about 7.15, 7.20, you can't actually see what time you're booking attractions. That's because people were stalling on booking or so many people were trying to book right at 7 a.m. that it would say they're booking a 9 a.m. spot and then by the time the system processed it, it would give them like a 4 p.m. spot and people were getting mad. So because of that, it just says, see if this is available and it's kind of, you get what you get. When I clicked at 7 a.m., it gave me an 11.15 to 12.15 spot. I took it and now we're here. We're looking at a 65 minute standby line. Very happy to have a lightning lane on this one. Jungle Cruise, an opening day attraction, been delighting guests for over 50 years here in the Magic Kingdom. The world famous Jungle Cruise takes you on a boat ride around famous rivers of the world while a skipper tells you punny jokes. It has no height requirement, making it a perfect family attraction. It is beloved by many. Now, the one thing I will say negative about the Jungle Cruise, it has a very slow load and unload. So friendly rider to pack those patient pants, because even though you're in the lightning lane, doesn't mean you're gonna get right on on the attraction and this one you may wait a little bit maybe 10 or so minutes but i promise it'll be much better than the very long 65 minute queue out there Jungle Cruise check. I always enjoy the Jungle Cruise. I really do. It's a, it's a classic, a must do. And now we've got a little bit of time before I can book my next lightning lane because 120 minute rule, which I'm gonna explain and book my next one, but why book it empty handed when I'm so close to a Dole Whip? You know what I mean? That's better. Mm. So good. I go for the coconut of all the Dole Whips. I think it's better than the pineapple. I know that's controversial. The pineapple's a classic, but the coconut's my favorite. You're not done? Mm. So good. Okay, now that I've got a delicious frozen treat, let's talk about the 120 minute rule. As I said earlier, you can book your next lightning lane either after you've used the first one, if your first one expires, or after it's been 120 minutes since you booked the first one. Disney doesn't want you to book one at 7 a.m., get a return time of 4 p.m., and then not be able to book another lightning lane all morning long and all early afternoon long. Which means if you're in the park at 10 a.m., you book a lightning lane return time for 4 p.m., you could book another one at noon. The one you booked for 4 p.m. lives on its own over here. You get to enjoy that attraction at your scheduled time, but you can keep booking things otherwise. There's one other little caveat with the 120 minute rule and that if you are booking things at 7 a.m. the 120 minutes doesn't kick in until after the park officially opens which means Magic Kingdom opened at 9 today if you booked one at 7 a.m. for any time that was after 11 a.m. you could book one again at 11 and then at 1 and so on and so forth. One helpful thing Disney did do as an upgrade on Genie Plus is add a little blue bar at the top of your tip board that says when you can book your next one. I find that very helpful. Otherwise, you had to kind of keep track of it yourself. There was kind of a convoluted way to figure out when you could book your next one, but now it's front and center, so you always know when your next lightning lane's available. Because of this 120 minute rule, a lot of people do something called stacking, which I actually think is a very efficient and good way to do the parks. You can start booking things at 7 a.m. and you can stack a bunch of different lightning lanes for later in the afternoon. That way you could have a pool day, you could have a resort day, you can sleep in a little bit, besides whoever's gotta get up and book that first lightning lane. And then you can come into the park and have a bunch lined up. We've done several videos on this here at Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios, Epcot. So check those out if you wanna know more about stacking, which I do think is a great way to handle the parks, especially in the heat and the crowds.
And even though I wasn't intending on stacking today, because my lightning lane for Jungle Cruise was 11.15 to 12.15, that meant when I was headed into the park this morning at 11, it was time for me to book another lightning lane. As a pro tip, always set an alarm for the next time you're able to book one, that way you can book one right away. And as another pro tip, always make sure you have a lightning lane booked, especially with the addition of the modify feature, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. You should always have one to maximize your dollar, which as we've already established is more dollars probably. So at 11 a.m. when I was headed into the park, I booked Peter Pan's flight. I didn't even look what time it was for. I just clicked Peter Pan's flight because I know that's another popular attraction that tends to run out of lightning lanes earlier than others. Then I clicked that modify feature, which will allow you to change within the park to a different time for that same attraction or to a different attraction again within that same park. And I started doing what I call fiddle faddling, which is just refreshing the page to see if new times pop up. I did that for long enough that I went from, um, I believe like a seven or so o'clock time for Peter Pan's flight up to a four o'clock time, which is pretty good. The best part about modifying, it doesn't impact your two hours. The two hour clock starts when you book it initially. So always have something booked and then fiddle faddle to find something more desirable. It's not gonna impact that 120 minutes. You've already started your two hour timer. So that way you can look for something more desirable and not waste any time. That also means that at one o'clock, I can book another one, which it's almost time to do. All right, here we go. Before we can book, here's a little wait time and lightning lane update. As of right now, 70 minutes at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, no lightning lanes. Haunted Mansion, 55 minutes, 6.05 lightning lane. Jungle Cruise, 85 minutes. Good thing we already did that one. Peter Pan's Flight, 75 minutes. Got that one booked for four. Pirates of the Caribbean, 65 minutes, 4.45 lightning lane. Again, it's one o'clock, almost one o'clock. Uh, Space Mountain, 70 minutes, 8.15 lightning lane. Those are the top rides I have pinned. And let us book. Pirates. Pirates for 440 to 540. Now we're gonna go modify it and fiddle battle. Alright, fiddle battle for a bit. I got 130 to pop up, but I got got, which is what I call it when you're not fast enough and you click it and someone else snags it. But eventually I was able to get 220, which is not that far off. I might keep fiddle faddling around a little bit, but that's pretty good. Fiddle faddled a bit. And nothing better than 220 popped up in the five or less minutes that I was messing around with my phone. And just like I would advise you not to sit on your phone all day, I'm not gonna sit on my phone for the next hour either. I'm gonna peruse some shops, charge my phone for a little bit. But in between the attractions, it's a great time to do filler attractions like the Enchanted Tiki Room, Mickey's Philhar Magic, Carousel of Progress. It's a great time to make snacks or maybe check on a walk-up dining reservation, eat lunch. You want to have some good filler ideas in the midst because most likely you're going to not be able to do Genie Plus attractions back to back to back to back to back without stacking. But if you fiddle faddle, you can get things much closer and then you can just enjoy yourself throughout the park in between all of those different lightning lanes. Did a little window shopping at some of the stores and now it's time to tap in here at Pirates of the Caribbean. This is my favorite ride. I haven't been on it in a while at Magic Kingdom, so I'm excited. Sometimes people ask me if there's a benefit to using the Magic Mobile Plus, which is when you link your phone to your account and can tap in with your phone or your Apple Watch or a Magic Band or a Magic Band Plus. Honestly, I don't think it makes much of a difference as a solo person because I'm just tapping in for one. And if I'm being completely honest, I forgot a Magic Band. Uh, but if you have multiple people in your party, I do think it's probably faster for everyone to have their own Magic Band or own device to tap in. Otherwise, the one person has to like swipe through everyone's. And I do think kids like having their own magic band and it makes them feel cool. So there's that answer. Now, Pirates of the Caribbean is, again, my favorite ride in Magic Kingdom. I say it every time, but it's a perfect ride in my opinion. It has got the thrills, but it's still a family ride. It's a boat ride. It's been updated with the new characters, which is fun. And it's got the classic song. Hello, Pirates playing chess. Fun fact, they're in a stalemate. They're pondering their next move for all eternity. If you enjoyed that fun fact, I encourage you to go enjoy our secret series, which was a passion project series of mine where I went through all the parks and shared different details and history and imaginary backstories and fun facts. Lots of good stuff in there. But for now, since we have tapped in, we can book our next lightning lane. That did say 302, because that would have been 120 minutes from when I booked this, but then I modified it, didn't change. But then when I tapped in, now it's changed. And let's see, Thunder's out, Mansion's far away, Space is far away, Buzz is three hours out, that's not terrible. Um, Enchanted Tales with Belle, 8.40, that's pretty late. 
Small World's not too far out. Jungle is at 1010, but we already did Jungle. Winnie the Pooh 515, that's not terrible. Ariel and Cinderella are out. Mickey 550, Princess Tiana still has some. Peter Pan, we already have booked. Mine Train sold out of individual lightning lanes. What should we do? What should we do? I'm going to go ahead and book Mansion and see if I can fiddle faddle for a sooner time. Oh, that was amazing. It did it for me. I didn't even have to fiddle faddle. In the process of booking, it said, hey, a new time's available. And that's in just a few minutes, which means we can go right there. Hooray. Usually that happens the opposite way, where it's like, you wanted this time. Oh, sorry, it's further out now. But that was a nice surprise. Is that be my favorite ride and it was amazing again I'm gonna max say my pirate accents bad but you tell me anyway um unfortunately that ride did trigger one of my favorites don't be a jerk in the park PSAs hey flash photography I wouldn't to quote your friend and mine dr. Grant seeker please don't take flash photos on dark rides one your photos are gonna be terrible two it ruins it for other people and three it ruins the imagineering details there's a reason it's dark the imagineers have lit what they want you to see if you see it in the light it's not gonna it's it ruins it and it's not fun for anyone around you if you really want to take photos take videos and then hit that little white circle because it'll help you motion capture the photos that's the end on to Haunted Mansion little pro tip for getting around Magic Kingdom if you want to avoid things like this crowd of people going to Liberty Square come right over here friends there's this convenient little walkway along the water of the rivers of America between Frontierland and Liberty Square I love walking on here very few people know about it for some reason and it's a beautiful walk so enjoy especially helpful if there's a cavalcade or a parade going by Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Haunted Mansion. I am your host, your ghost host. There's a 40-minute line right now. That's not actually too bad. The lines seem to have dipped a little bit for that kind of mid-afternoon drop where people that got here early have gone back to the hotel to rest a little bit. Hope that means it's easier to get some lightning lanes after this one. Listen, I love this one. Thank you. Is there another touch point up ahead? That's okay. Thank you, Allie. Tapped in at Haunted Mansion. Now, you probably heard me ask the cast member if they had a, another touch point open. That's because at many attractions, they do have two touch points at many of them. And once you tap in at the second one, you can start booking your next lightning lane. However, many times for efficiency's sake, the cast members will turn off the second one. So I always like to ask because that means we can start looking right meow for our next lightning lane. Haunted Mansion, another classic opening day attraction, probably the most beloved attraction in all of the Disney lore. It's a family ride, no high requirement. It's a classic Omnimover style of attraction. Now, what I will say is make sure you know your kids because the front half can be a little spooky scary, but it does get fun and lighthearted on the back half thanks to the Imagineering genius of the two main designers, Claude Coates and Mark Davis, with a little bit of whimsy from Rolly Crump uh, mixed in. Rolly Crump unfortunately recently passed away. So love coming to the Haunted Mansion to see this brilliant work. And uh, off we go to see the 999 Happy Holmes. <laughs>
haunted mansion um i went ahead and booked enchanted tales with bell right as i was walking in but it's for much much later today so now i'm going to spend a few minutes standing in the shade fiddle faddling to see if i can pull an earlier time for that or an earlier time for something nearby i do know the parade's about to be here so i would like to go towards Fantasyland and not anywhere on the parade route so give me a second at this point it's getting to be a little bit of slim pickings even though it's only three o'clock it says that Enchanted Tales is now out. It says Thunder is out. It says that Jungle Cruise is out. It says that, again, Ariel, Cinderella, Peter Pan's Flight, those are all out without making any kind of like fiddle faddling. Um, it's showing me It's a Small World at 455. It's showing me Buzz around six. It's showing me Space Mountain at 940. So now I'm going to fiddle faddle and see if I can get something before Peter Pan at four. Something I'd like to do. Obviously, I don't want to do something just to do something. 455, 405 for Dumbo, but that's 340 for Mad Tea Party. That's not really a good, like, well, he's a 20 minute, so that's more of a filler ride. So fiddle faddled for about three minutes and wasn't able to pull something in the three o'clock hour yet. But I did go ahead and lock in a Space Mountain in the five o'clock hour because that's literally five hours earlier than any other Space Mountain. It was waffling between something in the 10 o'clock hour or gone. And so when I saw a 540 for space, that's pretty good. So I went and locked it in. Then I realized much like Pooh Bear, there's a rumbly in my tumbly. So I ordered lunch at Columbia Harbor House and I might do a little more fiddle faddling while I'm enjoying that. But otherwise I've got about 45 minutes till Peter Pan anyway. So good to stay in this location. Columbia Harbor House is a quick service restaurant located here in Liberty Square. It is fish and chips, fried shrimp, grilled shrimp, salmon, lobster roll. They've also got some chicken tenders and salads. It's one of the better dining options, I think, in Magic Kingdom. Magic Kingdom definitely is the weakest food in all four of the parks, in my opinion. And my best tip is actually to leave and go eat at one of the monorail resorts. Alan and I did that recently and ate at Grand Floridian Cafe, but obviously I'm in the middle of doing a bunch of lightning lanes and trying to get all these things done. So this is one of my favorite choices to eat inside the park. One of the reasons I love Columbia Harbor House is because they have a huge upstairs seating area that not a lot of people know about. So you can usually always get a table. Uh, I still recommend eating off peak meal times and it'll be even quieter up here, but if you're able to definitely come upstairs at Columbia Harbor House. Also here is my late lunch. I went for the grilled shrimp skewer. It normally comes with green beans and rice, but I swapped in hush puppies because I love hush puppies. The last time I had this, I was delightfully surprised. So ready to give it another whirl. Those are very good grilled shrimp. Like kind of hard to believe they came from a quick service restaurant grilled shrimp. And what I like about this restaurant is that it does have all your classics. It's got fried shrimp, it's got fish and chips, it's got chicken nuggets, but also if you want something a little bit lighter because it's so hot out or you've been just eating a lot of theme park food, I like the grilled shrimp, the grilled salmon's good as well. The lobster roll's nice, it's a colder lobster roll. Let's try the green beans as well. Green beans are fine, they're nothing that unique. They're cooked well. Um, I'm definitely gonna put a condiment on them but the real reason we're here. Mm. I love hush puppies and these are no exception. They've got actual pieces of corn in there. They're slightly sweet because of the batter. Mm. Crispy on the outside. Interesting fact, hush puppies get their names because back in the olden days in the South, um, the slaves would be cooking in the kitchen that would be not part of the house because of the commonness of house fires. Um, and so they would have to take the food from the kitchen into the plantation homes and often the dogs that would be on the plantation would run and, and jump on the slaves because they wanted to get the food. So oftentimes what they started doing was frying up little bits of leftover dough and keeping them in their uh, aprons or keeping them in their pockets. That way when the dogs charged them, they could throw them down and it would hush the puppies so they didn't knock them over while they're carrying all the trays of food. So there you go. Bet you didn't know you'd learn that today watching this video. Had a lovely and luxuriating meal up at the top of Columbia Harbor House. I did fiddle faddle for just a few more moments and I was able to snag an Enchanted Tales with Belle at 4.30, which means I can go there pretty much right after I do Peter Pan's flight. Hopefully what I'm showing is that I am fiddle faddling, I am using my phone, but I'm also getting a lot done and I'm not rushing around the park. I've had a nice lunch, I had a nice Dole Whip, I perused some stores, so I still think we're gonna get nine done and uh, very excited to go off to Neverland. Also, Peter Pan's right there. Should I go see him? 
I was about to go on your ride and go to Neverland, really? but then I saw you and I thought I'd come say hi. Well, yeah, that's even better, you see. Uh, if you go in there, there's pirates and uh, they smell like codfish. And I don't. No. What about Tinkerbell? At where's she been? Oh, we're playing a game of pie and go seek, and if I find her, then I win. Well, and if I win, then she has to make me a dozen pumpkin muffins with chocolate chips. So uh, if you see her, let me know, and I'll share some of the prize for you. I was going to say, I love pumpkin, so you'll, if you'll share. And chocolate chips? Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. deal. I'll share them. Deal. And if she wins, then, uh, well, that's never happened before, so I'm not sure what happens then. Mm. Well, yes, I'll, we'll never find out. I'll keep my eye out for her. Okay, can we take a photo? Of course we can. Talk about right time, right place. I haven't seen Peter Pan actually doing meet and greets there for a long time. He often wanders through Fantasyland and he had like two parties in front of me. So that was fun. Saw Peter Pan, got my pick. I'm supposed to look for Tinkerbell because if he finds Tinkerbell before she finds him, then Tinkerbell's gonna make him pumpkin muffins and he said he'd share and I love pumpkin. So we're gonna go find Tinkerbell. And of course by find Tinkerbell, I mean we're gonna go ride Peter Pan's bike. It has a 120 minute wait, which is somehow not shocking. Basically an opening day ride, technically open two days later. It has maintained its popularity ever since 1971. This is that wonderful family attraction. Hello. Where you jump in a flying pirate ship and sail off to Neverland with Peter, Wendy, Tink, and the rest of the gang and defeat Captain Hook. If you recall from earlier, this is the second Lightning Lane I booked today at the 11 a.m. time and then I fiddle faddled for an earlier spot and we are finally cashing it in. You know, this little ride, it's like 90 seconds long. A lot of people say it's overrated. And you know what, if you waited in a 120 minute queue, I'd probably agree with you, but boy, does it make me feel nostalgic. Pan's flight, check. I love when the cast member does the pixie dust on the lap bar. That's my favorite part every time. And now I've got about 15 minutes till I can do Enchanted Tales with Belle. So obviously I'm gonna go into Fantasy Fair and see if there's any new ears. Fantasy Fair is a really good spot for ears, kind of underrated. Let's see. I have those, I have those. These Moana ones are new, but I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the flowers. That's just me personally. I have those. I do like those. I haven't bought them yet, though, because I bought a lot of purple recently because I also bought those, which I'm wearing right now. I do like the cocoa ones. I thought I wanted these, and then I saw them in person. I don't. I think they're too yellow for my hair. Have those classics. I love the pirates ones. I have those. There's a new mermaid pair. I swear, Ariel gets more ears than any other character. There's like ten mermaid iterations in the world. I do kind of like these Snow White ones. I don't have these yet because they're the bobble bar ones, so they're 54 instead of the normal 34. And Snow's not my favorite princess, but I really like the coloring. Hmm, something to think about. Have those, those are one of my favorite pairs. I actually have these because one time I forgot ears for a video, and so I bought these and cut the veil off. I also really want these. I haven't bought these yet, these corduroy coral ones. I just feel like the season for corduroy is over. But in the fall, I'll like them. Ooh, okay, now these I'm interested in. It's this artist, Joey Gal, who just did a um, collection for Disney. You can see a lot of his other items over here. There's a blanket, a shirt, sweatshirt, cups, all kinds of things. And here's the ears. They've got little, like, cartoony visions of Mickey driving the train and the ghost and the dog with the keys on pirates Dumbo the partner statue those are cute they are not priced my guess is more than $34.99 I don't want to carry them around so maybe I'll stop in the important on the way out or I'll just remember them for the next time I'm here wait how cute is this fantasy land collection that's like looks collegiate but it says fantasy land on it there's also like this shirt and the sweatpants that go with it. Wait, this is a sweat skirt? What is happening? I can't do that. But this, 
I in no world need another cut, but that's cute. Oh my gosh, it gets better. Look at the sweatshirt. It's like a sweater, but it's a sweatshirt. And look at the hat. Oh my gosh. There's also like bell bottom. I can't believe they're back. Bell bottom, pull on pants, and this cardigan. Oh my gosh. More than any pair of the ears I just said I might like, this hat is speaking to me. So I'm gonna remember you exist, little guy. And now I'm gonna go see Belle. First things first, how cute is the little like crude mechanical Lumiere up there at Enchanted Tales? I'm so excited to do this. It has a 55 minute wait, so definitely a good use of a lightning lane. I haven't done Enchanted Tales with Belle since 2020, maybe even 2019. It did not come back for a very long time. It's only been back in full force for a couple weeks at this point. At one point they were using this for a meet and greet space with Belle, but again, just a few weeks ago, it came back in full force. This is this incredible storytelling experience with Belle herself that starts here in Maurice's cottage and a magic mirror transports you to the Beast castle uh, on the day that Belle and Beast fell in love. And they have members of the audience, usually kids, help tell the story of Belle along with Belle and this incredible Lumiere and Madame Wardrobe. And it is so cute and the technology is amazing and I love it and I'm so excited to go do it right now. The show itself from beginning to end is about 20 minutes. So keep in mind, you may wait here for a few minutes because they obviously, unlike a ride, continuously can't load people. They have to wait for the show to end. The one thing I will say about the Lightning Lane is that you don't get to go through the queue, which is very, very cute at this attraction. It's through Maurice and Belle's cottage. Uh, you'll see things from Belle's childhood, her favorite books, her little measuring marks on the wall that her dad used to see how tall she was. So if there's not too long of a line, like earlier today, I had a 30 minute wait during a lull, I would do the standby line. However, I don't think you should wait an hour for it. And so I'm happy to have snagged this lightning lane. But since we have tapped in, we can look for another one. Enchanted Tales with Belle Dunn. I really do think that show is just so, so cute. I really enjoy it. I think it's got some very cool tech. I know how a lot of things happen in Walt Disney World. I do not know the secret and the magic behind the mirror. It's truly a magic mirror. It's amazing. Um, and I think the uh, Lumiere and the wardrobe are incredible. And uh, while I was waiting to go in, I was able to snag another lightning lane. I booked Buzz first. I just booked the first thing I saw just to lock one in and get that 120 minutes kicked off as I've uh, advised. And then I fiddle faddled a little bit and I was able to pull an It's a Small World for about 10 minutes from right now. So I'm gonna go to the secret best bathrooms in the Magic Kingdom and then go to It's a Small World. There they are. It's the ones behind Pinocchio's Village Haas. These and the ones by Gaston's Tavern, way less crowded than the Tangled ones. You're welcome. I've got a few minutes before I can tap in at It's a Small World, so let's do a little wait time update. 5.08, 60 minutes at Thunder, it says none are left. 8.30 at Buzz, 50 minute wait. 
Nothing left for Ariel or Princesses at uh, Cinderella's side of Fairy Tall, 90 and 45 minutes. Mickey, 35 nothing left. Space, 65 nothing left. Barnstormer, there's some left at 8.30. Enchanto Tales, none left, but down to a 25 minute wait. Mansion has some left, 40 minute wait. 75 minute wait at Jungle Cruise, none left. Mad Tea Party has some 20 minute wait, that's a great filler. Magic Carpets of Aladdin has some left, 35 minute wait, that's a good filler. Winnie the Pooh, 50 minutes, 9.30, that's one I might do later. None left at Princess Tiana's side of Fairy Tale Hall. Of course, there's some left at Philhar Magic and Monsters Inc. Those are good fillers, though. Peter Pan's Flight, none left. Pirates is down and has none left. Mine Train, 100 minutes, none left. Uh, Mermaid, 7.30, 45 minutes. So it's looking bleak. Time, though, for It's a Small World. This is attraction number six with Genie Plus. It's a Small World may not be a top ride for everyone, but it's a Magic Kingdom must do for me. It's a classic, it's an icon. It has a 40 minute wait, which I think is too long for Small World to begin with. Small World does wax and wane a little bit more than things like Peter Pan's Flight, where sometimes it'll get down to 30 minutes or less, but then there's sometimes it's well over 60. So it's a good use of a lightning lane in my opinion, but maybe not as top of a priority as Peter Pan's Flight, Haunted Mansion, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad Space, etc. However, I'm trying to use Genie Plus in a more realistic fashion today and pull things that are close by. And that's why I was happy to get a small world since we were already in Fantasyland. Confirmed with the cast member, there's another touch point active. So can't start looking for a next lightning lane yet, but it's a small world, a classic, an icon. It's another opening day attraction. The artwork largely done by amazing Disney artist, Mary Blair. Although Rolly Crump did help with it. And again, we just lost Rolly. So nice to pay tribute to him on this attraction as well. It's got that earworm Richard and Robert Sherman song that you know you kind of got to know and love. And this is just a quintessential Disney attraction. So a good choice for a Magic Kingdom day in my opinion. Thank you. Have fun, friend. All right, tapped in for my second time, so let's go ahead and book another lightning lane. I would love to do Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, though that has been gone for a long time today. I would love to do Space Mountain, which is also gone. I'd love to do Buzz or Winnie the Pooh, maybe meet a character, so let's see. Once again, gonna book something immediately, so I'm gonna go ahead and book Buzz immediately, just so I have one locked in, and that starts that 120 minutes in case I need to use it. Now let's go back to my tip board. One thing I like to do is constantly be monitoring my top picks. I've already done It's a Small World, so I can uncheck that. Uh, I've got Space checked. I've got, so let's add the Winnie, Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I've got Buzz and Big Thunder. And I've got some of the characters checked. I'm gonna add Tiana. Oh, it says I have too many, so we won't add Tiana, sorry. G Fred. You can set that up. You can pin things to the top by setting up your day in the my day section of this. It'll ask you your favorites. Go ahead and pick what you'd like. And then I like to modify those throughout the day. So that way the things I'm looking for are always on the top of the tip board. And again, to modify, we're gonna go to the one we have, which is Buzz, modify plan, and start the fiddle faddle. a small world check while waiting to board. I booked that Buzz Lightyear that you saw. Then I saw a Space Mountain for a few hours away, but I booked it just because I was like, hey, at least it's Space Mountain. But then I fiddle faddled a few more times and I got a Buzz Lightyear for right meow. I'm actually making a pit stop though to pick up a coffee and then we're headed to Tomorrowland. Popping in to Pinocchio's Village Haas, which is a quick service restaurant that serves mediocre flatbread pizzas. I don't recommend eating here but they do have Joffrey's cold brew, shaky Jamaica's on mobile order, and I love that. The only thing better than a shaky Jamaica is a shaky Jamaica you don't have to wait for. So as I was walking into It's a Small World, I mobile ordered one, and then I went and picked it up after the ride. There's actually a couple spots you can mobile order Joffrey's cold brews at here in the park. Pinocchio's Village Haas, Friar's Nook, 
and Sleepy Hollow all have some form of Joffrey's cold brew. Not all of them have shaky Jamaicas, but that's still pretty good info, especially for the morning times when the Joffrey's kiosk in Tomorrowland and Starbucks have very long lines. Or considering the fact that this park only has one Joffrey's kiosk, which I think is a travesty, I like that I can still get it in Fantasyland too. Headed now into Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. This is another family ride, no height requirement here either. Omni Mover attraction that puts you inside a battle with Buzz and the aliens against the evil Emperor Zerg as he tries to collect batteries because the man's never heard of Costco. There's like one giant rain cloud. It wasn't even supposed to rain today, but it's Florida and I just got hit with the biggest raindrop in my eyeball. Anyway. Buzz at your Space Ranger Spin. I do love this attraction. I think it has a lot of rewritability. I love the physical sets, and I love trying to become a galactic hero every time I try and ride it. This is another one like It's a Small World or Pirates of the Caribbean that kind of ebbs and flows as far as the wait time goes. It's 45 minutes right now, but earlier today it was over 70, and then sometimes it'll drop to like 40. So again, kind of a mid-tier demand for Genie Plus. And now that we've tapped in, I'm gonna go ahead and start looking again. Your Space Ranger spin check. I haven't rained in a while. I'm pretty rusty. I did terribly. Um, but now it's actually pouring rain outside. So I'm just standing in the gift shop in the corner, fiddle faddling. I booked a very late, like a 10 30 mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh before I got on the ride, which triggered that 120 minutes rule. Um, but now I'm just fiddle faddling a lot to see if I can get a time to show up for Space or Thunder or an earlier time for mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I'd accept some of the character meet and greets as well, but I'd like to do at least one more ride um, and then maybe also one character experience. We shall see. Taking a look, it's a little after six. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad's been like a sneaky one that's gone missing most of the day. I think that's because with Splash gone and both Mine Train and being Tron being fancy rides, the only thrill rides are Thunder and Space on Genie Plus. So those two are pretty popular, which bumps Thunder up as far as like order of importance of booking it because before splash closed i would have put thunder as tier two thunder's definitely tier one now so just refreshing thunder's got a 60 minute wait nothing offered space has 75 nothing offered i just got got by space uh, buzz is now closed it had stopped actually while i was on it there's still times for buzz there's still times for dumbo there are still times for small world mad tea party magic carpets of aladdin None of the mean greets, the shows, yes. Mickey's Fill Our Magic and Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Nothing for Peter Pan or Pirates or Speedway, but there is a few for Little Mermaid. So just gonna keep refreshing. Oh, oh, maybe, 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 maybe. Don't get me, 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 maybe, please. Ugh. All right, that gives me hope that let's try again. No, I don't, no, I didn't mean to click that. No, I don't wanna ride the Barnstormer. All right, space showing up at seven, which is in like 45 minutes, gave me hope. Come on, come on, come on, 7.55, that's not great, but it's not terrible, nope. Getting God again, the surface and buzz, despite all the bat, oh, 6.25, oh my God, that's like right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. This is, oh my gosh, yes. I was about to make a hilarious joke, like there's so many batteries in here, you'd think the cell service would be better, which makes no sense because I'm pretty sure batteries and cell service don't have anything to do with each other. But regardless, the power of the fiddle paddle works. We have Space Mountain in two minutes. It's still pouring rain though, so maybe we'll give it a second. The bad news, it is still raining. The good news, I got a new Magic Band. They still had the Lightyear one, and it's really cute in both Lightyear themed. And did you really expect me to be trapped in a Toy Story themed gift shop and not buy anything? We're just lucky I didn't buy the whole Pizza Planet plate set because I can't bring that on Space Mountain. Okay. Seriously though, look how cute the box is. And there's Buzz. And then it's, I like that it's teal because as much as I love Buzz, his colors don't go with a lot of what I wear. But I love the, the teal 
and the orange and the fuchsia. It's almost, it's it's close to our colors. The purple is a little bit different, but it's close to Mammoth Club colors. I also really liked the movie Lightyear, and I know a lot of people hated it, but I liked to, you know what, I liked it. And the fact that they still have this magic band available, what are you gonna do? All right, it pretty much stopped raining. Look at the rainbow! Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. It's coming from Space Mountain where we're headed right now. Truly though, you can never trust the weather in Florida. I looked today, it had a 0% chance of rain. But it's literally just this one cloud. You can see beautiful blue sky right over there. Just this one angry cloud. But look at that pretty rainbow we get. There's actually two. It's a double rainbow. It kind of picked up as I was walking, so now I'm hiding under the people mover track. So close. So close yet so far. It's at this time I can remind you again, since Florida's weather is a liar, you should always pack rain gear. Don't be like me. Pack those ponchos, friends. Pack those waterproof shoes. Pack those rain jackets. Pack those umbrellas. It's, it's the time of year where I need to switch from my fanny packs back to a backpack so I can put a rain jacket in there or a hat. I actually asked if they had any kind of hat in the Toy Story store and they did not. Because mostly what I hate about the rain is when my hair gets really wet, followed by my feet. We're so close. Blue Cloud, could you hurry up? Could you, come on, this is taking forever. All right, finally made it over to Space Mountain. It's still drizzling a little bit, but I'm hoping by the time I'm done riding, it will be done. Now, friendly reminder, there's no filming on Space Mountain anymore. So any footage you see on this ride will be from before that rule was uh, enacted. I do love this ride. It has a 44, 44 inch height requirement, which used to be the tallest height requirement in the park until Tron. It's that classic roller coaster in the dark opened in 1975 just screams nostalgia for me. I think between this, Thunder, Peter Pan, and Pirates, I think I have the most memories from childhood riding, so I giggle every time because it feels like being a kid again. Also, I'm walking really slow because it's really slippery in here, and one of my life's biggest fears is falling down. That's not metaphorical. It's, it's physically falling down on the ground. Attention. Space Mountain definitely has some of the longer lines in the park, especially with Splash Mountain closed. Anytime you close a big attraction, especially a big thrill attraction, it's just gonna make the other thrill rides longer. I would say the best times to ride Space Mountain, if you are a Disney World Resort guest, you can come in a half an hour early and Tomorrowland and Fantasyland are open. So trying to knock out Space or Mind Train is a good use of that time. It often tends to die in the evening, or if you're a deluxe or DVC resort guest, you get the extended hours at Magic Kingdom certain nights. Be a good time to ride it as well. I need to link up my new Magic Band to my account, but for now, we're gonna book something and see what we can get. I opened it up, 8.30, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, snagged it. I'm gonna fiddle battle to see if I can get an earlier time, but that feels good. I do truly adore Space Mountain. Giggle every single time. Also, nice. Big Thunder Mountain popped back up when I booked it. I fiddle faddled a few times before getting in the rocket ship. I originally booked 8.30. I saw 7.30, I got got, but then I originally got it all the way up to eight, which is like 50 minutes, five zero minutes away. That's number nine, baby. So gonna relax for a few minutes and then head over to Frontierland. I don't know why it's all of a sudden showed up. Part of me was like, well, maybe it's because it's raining and people weren't riding it, but Times also showed up all of a sudden for mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh and space, and those have nothing to do with the rain, so just the power of the fiddle faddle. Caught up on some emails and some other work things because I'm cool like that, and now it is time to go ride ride number nine, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It would have been the perfect time to do something like Carousel of Progress, Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. Mickey's Philhar Magic, Enchanted Tiki Room, Dumbo, Barnstormer, some of the characters had shorter lines. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the best way to use Genie Plus is to mix in the filler attractions like things I just mentioned in with your lightning lanes. 
Fiddle faddling will help as you've seen throughout the day, but don't spend an hour fiddle faddling to get something to be an hour closer. Get things close enough and then go do those filler attractions or eat your food or enjoy the parade or the castle show in between. Can't say I'm mad about ending with Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. I love Magic Kingdom at night. It's just so beautiful. And Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is one of those attractions that's even more fun when the sun goes down. Here we are, we made it to our final ride, number nine, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This has a 44 zero inch height requirement and it is the wildest ride in the wilderness. Now it has dropped to a 35 minute wait. I think the rain helped with that. And I think the fact that the fireworks are in a little bit more than 30 minutes or so helped with that because until about an hour or so ago when it was raining, it had a 70 plus minute wait all day. And I, again, think that's largely in part due to the fact that its next door neighbor is now closed. I adore Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It's again, always been one of my favorites. Definitely a nostalgic classic for me. If you do not have Genie Plus or you are not able to get one for this attraction, uh, it does look like around fireworks time is a good time to come over here. Plus fireworks are very cool from this, uh, this attraction. Although with it being happily ever after, I assume most people will watch fireworks from Main Street. Well, there you have it, ride number nine down. What a perfect one to end on. And of course you could keep going. There are still lightning lanes available for things like Dumbo, the Barnstormer, Mad Tea Party, Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin, and you could fiddle faddle for other things as well. Plus, like I said, the wait times have all dropped right now because fireworks are about to start and they said inclement weather's coming. So that usually tends to drop the weights as well. It is like eerily empty walking right now. I think a lot of people left during the rain and I think everyone's on Main Street right now. But let's recap some of the important lessons we learned today. Well, there you have it. Nine of the most popular rides in the Magic Kingdom, I would say, besides Seven Doors Mine Train, we got them all. About eight hours from the time I was jumping into the queue at Jungle Cruise, to the time I was jumping into the queue at Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Don't forget, we also had the bonus fun of riding Disney's newest attraction, Tron Light Cycle Run. So, $35 is a lot, especially when you multiply that by everyone in your party, but that's less than $4 a ride. And most of the queues were well over an hour today. So it really depends what your priorities are. If saving money is your priority, then I would recommend rope dropping. If you're able to stay at a DVC or a deluxe resort, which I know kind of goes counterintuitively with saving money, uh, those get extended hours as well, which would allow you extra access after the park closes and lines are very short then. But if you don't want to stand in a lot of lines, you can still accomplish quite a bit with Genie Plus. Everything I've said today, everything I've shown you today works the same for parties up to 10. The app will tell you 12, but I've talked to many cast members, including some of the developers, and they say it's actually up to 10 people. So a lot of times people will say, oh, you can only accomplish all that because you're a single person. But I've been assured many times if that is not true and up to 10 would work the same. Is Genie Plus confusing? Yes. Is it a little bit more work than Paper Fast Pass? Yes. But I would argue it's about the same amount of work as Fast Pass Plus, except for instead of getting up early a couple months before your vacation, you have to get up early on your vacation. However, to maximize Fast Pass Plus, I was on my phone fiddle faddling the same way I am now. It's really up to your family to decide if Genie Plus is worth it. I think stacking is an excellent way to use Genie Plus and it's a little bit less stressful, I would say, than trying to use it all day long. So definitely go check out the mini videos we've done on stacking. And remember, Genie Plus isn't always $35 per person. It's just that much during the busiest times of year. So I've said it before and I'll say it again. I know it is so tempting to come when the kids are out of school, but that's when everyone comes. Spring break, Easter, 4th of July, Christmas, New Year's. I didn't even think this was that bad today. 
um, but it's not only going to be longer lines at the attractions and more expensive for things like Genie Plus, you're going to have longer lines at merchandise shops, you're going to have longer lines and wait times for your food at restaurants. It's just simply not as fun to come during peak season as it is during the off time. So if there's any way you can swing some off time visits, I highly recommend it. If you want to see what it's like at Universal during peak season, I did a video recently and I'm talking 200 minute waits at many attractions. But we set out to do what we accomplished, nine of the best attractions in the park during peak season, $35 at Genie Plus. Let me know what other things you want to see down in the comments. Do you have any challenge ideas? Let us know that. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, come join our Discord. And until next time, friends, I'm on, and it's been magical. Now I'm going to go watch Happily Ever After. Good night.